I'm Kenny Takeuchi. I'm with the Legends of Kearney Bowl. You know the Legends of Kearney Bowl, we have old cars, old drivers, so we got an old announcer. How about this? 1936, when Bill Vukovic Sr. got started in racing, I lived out in the country, out near Biola, and there was a farmer that raised uh, grapes, uh, Carl Cruiser. And uh, Billy was able to go out there and spend time with him. And so Billy really actually raced in the vineyards there when he first came up in auto racing back in 1936. I did my first local race here back in 1958, Salma Speedway. Used to be the Rodeo Grounds, that's where I really started. I started uh, full time in, in uh, Kearney Bowl in 1960. Well, you know, I used to I used to own some timing equipment. Like at Kearney Bowl, I would sit next to the announcer and I would do the I was on a timing and scoring crew. I had my timer, but I'd help score also. So one day, the, uh, Ed York was a promoter there, the announcer couldn't make it. He worked for KMJ for some reason, they couldn't make it. He said, we need an announcer, would you try? And I said, I've done some announcing, uh, sports announcing, different sports, I'll do it. So uh, that started, really. And I was lucky, uh, there was a well-known announcer, Sandy Reed, he announced at Ascot Speedway down in Gardena, motorcycles and sprint cars. And he used to let me do, when I went down there, he let me do the time trials, which was a great experience. And I, I really got my foot in the door then. And then, of course, I got to know J.C. Agajan through that, and it was, uh, it was history after that. I had the pleasure of going back to uh, Daytona Speedway three times back in the 70s. And I was able to do some pit announcing, and that was a, a you know I was very fortunate. And thanks to Bob Barkheimer and others with that uh, had a say with NASCAR, I was able to go back there, and that is one of my true memories. But to to see uh, Billy win uh, two of his 500 races, that was really something that you know never forgotten. It's just too bad what happened on the third attempt. Yes. Yes. So, I mean, you know, I've seen him when he first started out and in his heyday. I mean, to me, someone asked me a good question today. Who do you think the all-time great Indy 500 driver is? And I said, my vote would be for Bill Vukovic, without a doubt. Well, you know, I was able to see uh, Jackie Stewart and Phil Hill and them. Uh, they were great, but... Uh, Boy, it'd be pretty hard to single out any one driver. <laughs> I'm going to be very diplomatic. <laughs> okay, the number 10 car. This goes back in the 50s. That number 10 car, when driven by Johnny Key, won eight races in seven days. And at that time, they were racing seven times a week. I'm, I'm familiar with four times a week racing, and sometimes with the holiday, five and six times. But we did uh, NASCAR hardtop modified racing a regular basis four times a week. Okay, we'd start Friday night in uh, Fresno Kearney Bowl, Saturday in San Jose. When Altamont opened in 1964, we stayed overnight in San Jose, went to Altamont. Altamont did not have any lights. It was a day racetrack. We raced from 12 to 4, and then... Sunday evening, we had to be in Clovis to run uh, the half mile in Clovis Speedway. And we did that on a regular diet. <laughs> oh yes, nobody had, the, nobody had the luxury of having a separate pavement dirt car, same car. And in fact, a lot of them, if they didn't have the money, they'd run their Altamont pavement tires at Clovis. <laughs> Well, I guess the biggest change that I can see is the fact that racing in, let's call yesteryear, you were able to do things in your own shop. You didn't have to buy all your parts, things off the shelf. And you had to manufacture a lot of things. You had to be more creative. But I think it's, over the years, uh, the sport has been so streamlined that you can buy everything off the shelf and, you know, assemble a whole car at home there. 
But in the old days, you had to start, go out to a wrecking yard, and that's a good sponsor, a wrecking yard to sponsor a car, and then you go from there. You modify it or remodified it, and then you have a race car. Well, I think, and you look at the owner's group, most of car owners and drivers are retired. They have money, and they're spending their children's inheritance. <laughs> and that's the way I describe it. So anyway, and they're having a time of their life. They're having a, it's no pressure racing. That's one good thing. We don't have a hard, fast set of rules. It's no contact racing. You race as hard as you want, but don't be bumping into each other. And I think this is a coming thing. I mean, tonight we have a 25 car count. Normally, I mean, I was looking forward to 28 to 29. And we're, we're going to have races this year that we're going to have 25 plus cars. And I think that's great. Amazing. And the main thing, we're preserving auto racing history. And if it wasn't for these kind of guys out here, the legend of the Kearney Bowl, it would be gone. It would be gone.